This lesson will teach you how to test and terminate the wiring that conducts signals between one loop item and other loop items. An instrument loop usually passes through three phases before it is operational. The three phases are installation, loop checkout, startup. All three phases are vital. But when phase one, the installation of the loop, is done correctly, the other two phases become relatively simple. For instance, this is loop DL21. Let's assume you were assigned the task of commissioning the loop. The first check you might make is to put the controller on manual and try to stroke the control valve from the manual station in the controller. But suppose the valve doesn't move when you change the manual output. The problem could be any number of things. It could be a bad controller, but the controller was checked before it was board mounted. The problem could be a bad transducer or control valve, but they were calibrated before installation. Therefore, the problem may very well be a loop wiring error. A wire pair can be shorted. Or open. Or the polarity can be reversed somewhere in the wiring. The wiring can even be terminated at the wrong control valve. Now you will have to troubleshoot the whole system to locate a defect that should have been corrected during the installation stage. This takes time, and many times the operator is very anxious to have the loop so that he can start the process unit. If the loop is installed correctly and the wiring is tested for shorts, opens, grounds, polarity, and correct terminations, you will have smooth startups. The operator will be happy. In this lesson, we will install a specific loop. However, the procedures we will use can be applied to all electronic instrument loops. The only intra-plant deviation from our specific example will be slight nomenclature changes. For instance, one plant might refer to a multi-pair cable wire pair as the green-white pair. Another might call it pair number three. At the end of this segment, your instructor will review your plant's practices. The loop we will install is F480. It is a Veritrack DDC loop. The loop diagram should look familiar to you. We studied it in segment one of this lesson. The loop field components, the flow transmitter, control valve, and transducer are already mounted. This loop is going to be installed in an operating unit. Therefore, some of the cables and wires are existing. For instance, this is the location where the controller will go. This group of eight controllers and one recorder is called a five-pack. F480 is in five-pack location 2L. Second controller from the left, the bottom controller. Some of the wiring is common to a five-pack. One example is the 24 VDC circuits. The DC power is common to the five-pack, so we won't have to wire the circuit 
since it is existing. However, we must still test all the wiring associated with the loop, even if the wires have been previously terminated. Now, work exercise one in your workbook. In all this maze of instrument wiring, How can you identify the correct signal wires and cable wires FC-480 uses? The loop diagram was our map. It showed how signals interconnected and how the loop functioned. The loop diagram, however, did not tell us which multi-pair cable wires connect IJB-407 TB2556, terminals 1A and 1B, to cubicle K1, TB2556, terminals 1A and 1B. Or IJB407, TB2556, terminals 2D and 2C, to cubicle K1, TB2556, terminals 2D and 2C. An instrument junction box wiring diagram must be used to find which wires are to be used for a particular signal path. Study the drawing. It is divided into field IJB 407 and Control House Terminal Cabinet K1. This is the field side of the IJB. These two wire cables go to transmitters and transducers. This is the house or multi-pair cable side of the IJB. Locate the transmitter signal wires. They are marked FC-480. These are the two-wire cable wires that go from the IJB to the transmitter. FV-480 designates the transducer wiring. These are the wire pairs that connect the transmitter to the IJB and the transducer to the IJB. Now look again at the control house side of the IJB. This IJB is connected to the control center by way of a 25-pair cable. Locate the wire colors used for FC-480. The colors are orange and white. What wire colors are used for FV-480? Green and white wires are used. Look at some of the other cable wire colors. For instance, terminals 3B and 3A have a blue-red pair. Terminals 6D and 6C have a blue-black pair. Color coding of the wire pairs is the only way to identify wires in this particular multi-pair cable. Here is the multi-pair cable. How do you know this is the right cable? It does terminate at the correct IJB terminal strip.
But more importantly, it is tagged. Read the tag. It says, Terminal Cabinet K1, Strip 255-6. Does this correspond to the loop diagram? Yes, it does. IJB 407, TB 255-6, terminates on TB 255-6, cubicle K1. Every cable in the loop has a tag indicating the termination point. When in doubt, read the tag. Here are the orange-white and green-white cable pairs. Notice how the pairs are twisted. The twist not only keeps the pairs joined for identification purposes, but also reduces any magnetic interference that could affect the signal. Never defeat the purpose of the twists by unwrapping them. Form the orange-white and green-white pairs from the cable to the terminal strip. Cut the pairs about two inches beyond the terminal. Secure the pairs to the cable with lock stitch or tie wraps. Remove one half inch of insulation. Use the proper wire stripping tool. The wire gauge and stripper size must match. Avoid nicking the wire. Terminate the wires as per the IJB wiring diagram. Now work exercise number two in your workbook.